Since Repair Clinic encourages you to perform this procedure safely, a warning icon will appear when you should use caution. Many wine cellar repairs will require some disassembly of the appliance. Before you attempt this, be sure to unplug the power cord or shut off the power supply. To reach components like the control board or proximity sensor, use a Phillips head screwdriver to unthread the two mounting screws, securing the base grill. You may need to depress the tabs near the top of the grill to fully release it. Next, unthread the screws to release the control board cover. To replace the control board, first note the orientation of the wires connected to the board, then disconnect them. Use needle nose pliers to detach the old board from the mounting posts. Install the new control board by aligning it on the mounting posts and snapping it into place. Connect the wire connectors to the appropriate terminals on the new board. Reposition the control board cover and thread the screws. Reinstall the base grill by aligning it on the brackets, then thread the two mounting screws to secure. To remove the wine cellar door, use a T15 Torx bit or a 1 8 inch Allen bit to loosen the four mounting screws, securing both hinges to the frame. Pull off the hinge covers. You can now have an assistant help you to slide the door to the right to detach. To replace a hinge, set the door down on a towel or blanket. Unthread the two inside mounting screws, securing the hinge you're replacing. Now starting on a corner, pull the door gasket free of the channel. You will need to unthread all of the screws, securing the custom panel to the door assembly. With the custom panel removed, you can now access the outside hinge mounting screws. Unthread the two screws and remove the old hinge.
Install the new door hinge by aligning it on the frame, then thread and tighten the two outside mounting screws. Confirm that the spacers are aligned with the inside hinge screw holes. Then thread and tighten the two inside mounting screws. Realign the custom panel and secure it with the screws. Starting on a corner, reinsert the gasket into the channel on the liner. Reinstall the door assembly by aligning the hinges on the screws threaded into the frame. Slide on the hinge covers, then tighten all four screws. To access the condenser fan motor, capacitor, and compressor components, you will first need to pull the appliance away from the wall or cabinet. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, unthread all of the top mounting screws, securing the lower rear access panel. Fully unthread the right side mounting screw as well. Loosen the three screws on the bottom and you can lift off the panel. If you need to replace the compressor overload, use a flathead screwdriver to help detach the retainer, securing the overload and relay cover. Remove the cover. Pry the relay off of the compressor motor pins. You can now pry off the old overload and detach the wire. Install the new compressor overload by first attaching the wire to the terminal. Align the overload on the compressor motor pins and push it into place. Realign the relay on the motor pins and push it into place. Reposition the cover and secure it with the retainer. Reinstall the access panel by aligning it on the bottom screws. Tighten the screws. Fully re-thread the remaining mounting screws. To replace components inside the refrigerator compartment, your first step is to uninstall all of the racks. To do this, pull each rack forward, then lift the left side stop lever up while pushing the right side stop lever down to fully remove. Next, remove the tape covering the control panel assembly wires. Detach the bushing and disconnect the wire connector. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, loosen the four control panel assembly mounting screws.
You will need to detach three or more of the rack slide rails to remove the control panel assembly. With the slide rails removed, lift the assembly out. To uninstall the evaporator cover, unthread the six mounting screws securing the cover. Pull the cover away from the evaporator to reach the thermal fuse and heater assembly and the defrost thermistor. For better access, cut the zip tie securing the wire harness. If you need to replace the thermal fuse and heater, unthread the two mounting screws securing the wiring cover. Remove the cover. Disconnect the thermal fuse and heater assembly wire connector. Bend the heater shield retaining tabs outward so you can remove the shield. Slide the heater forward. Cut the tape and zip ties securing the heater wire and thermal fuse. You will need to cut both heater wires to fully remove the old assembly. Keeping the wire connector on the right side, install the new thermal fuse and heater by first positioning the heater on the evaporator. Replace the shield and bend the tabs in to secure. Position the thermal fuse on the right side of the evaporator. Use new zip ties and tape to secure the thermal fuse, heater wire, and defrost thermistor wire. Connect the thermal fuse and heater assembly wire connector. Replace the wiring cover and secure it with the screws. Use a new zip tie to secure the wires. Fully reposition the evaporator cover and thread the six mounting screws. Continue the reassembly by aligning the control panel assembly on the mounting screws. Tighten the screws. Reconnect the control panel assembly wire connector. Position the wires inside the liner and push the bushing into place. Replace the tape to cover the wires.
Reinstall the side rails as necessary. Reposition all of the racks. The small rack goes on the bottom. With the reassembly complete, plug the power cord back in or restore the power supply and your wine cellar should be ready for use.